Hi, in this video series I'm going to go over the creation of this door handle game asset. This is a two-part video, it's a beginner tutorial, so it's aimed at people with a bit of fundamental knowledge of Maya, but relatively new to game assets. So it's a low poly modeling project. We'll cover modeling and unwrapping in this video. And in the next video, we will create a higher poly model and we'll go into Mudbox in order to create some of the details on this asset. And then we'll use that to create a normal map. And then we will use Quixel Suite to create metal material. We will go completely through the modeling uh, of both the high poly, the low poly and texture baking. Okay, so a new scene in Maya. Now to start with, I'm going into View, Image Plane, and Import Image. I'm going to import a reference image. So I've set up a project folder for this, and this is the reference image that I'm going to use. Now I'm just jumping into the perspective view and dragging that back. Uh, so you can see there in the front view, it's the, the same size. Uh, I'm just going to scale that up. To the size I want, I'll get rid of the grid, I don't really need to see that. Now I'm actually going to use the quad draw tool here, which simply lets you draw the exact shape of the model that you're after. So there's very diff various approaches that you could follow in creating this. The quad draw tool is quite powerful and, and quite quick and gives me the exact shape that I'm after. So all I'm doing is going through clicking where I want verts. I'm making sure that these are quads, hence the name quad draw. So it's designed to create four-sided polygons. So once you've drawn the four verts, if you hold down shift and click in the middle, that will complete the polygon for you. I'm just going through, if I make a mistake, I'm just control Zing that. I'm just going through, it gives me a little preview when I hold down shift of where the new face will be. And provided you're happy with where that face will be, just uh, click to create it. It's not, not letting me create a triangle at the top there, so I just need to insert a new vert and create that final quad. I'll just turn off the modeling toolkit with the little power button in the top there. Go into vertex mode and I'm just uh, repositioning manually where I want those to be. You could also do that while you're still in the quad draw tool, simply by hovering your cursor over the uh, vertice and middle click and dragging. But in this case, I've pretty much finished with what I wanted to do for now anyway with the quad draw tool. So I'm happy just to go through and uh, manually adjust those verts. The multi-cut tool, if I hold down control, that lets me insert an edge loop when I click. Just remember to turn off the modeling toolkit. Uh, when you don't need it. These verts I want to align, so if I select the whole lot and click on scale, I can scale those uh, into alignment. If you're wondering what this menu is, this circular menu that comes up, that's just the uh, my Wacom graphics tablet settings. Uh, they're just keyboard shortcuts, just replacing the keyboard shortcuts uh, from the keyboard onto the tablet. Duplicated the model. Uh, I've mirrored that by scaling it in the ne negative one in the scale X. Now combine those two models and select all of your verts in the center. Go to merge vertices options and click apply. Now it's always important here when you do this to take a look to start with at the vert count. So I started with 22 verts and selected and when I clicked apply that changed to 11 vertices. I'm just uh, deleting history that's very important to maintain your uh, deleting history as you go you don't need to build up a large collection of nodes on your model uh, that 
bad practice. It's best practice to delete history as you go. Now, what I've just found is when I did the merge, it collapsed one of those verts because I had that selected. So I'm just running the merge again. And that maintains that shape at the top of the object. So that's more or less the basic shape completed. What we're making here is the low poly model. So this is what's going to go in game. Okay, to start with, I'm selecting the center face, the center edge loop. I'm going into delete edge vertex. Now, because that's deleted the top vertice, I'm just uh, scaling these two in and moving them up a little just to help form that, maintain that shape. Now I'm using the target weld tool to try to reduce the poly count where appropriate, which isn't too much. It's, it's a pretty low poly model. I'm just even, evening out some of these vertices. So that gives me a, a plane um, for the top half of the, the door handle shape. I can just select all of those front faces and extrude them out to give the shape some depth. So saving the scene, handle 01, always name your files with a number in the file name. So 01, and then when you're, you've made significant changes, save again as 02 and just keep in incrementing that save. It's very important to end up with a collection of file names. Uh, if you ever have any trouble with your model, you can go back to an earlier version. Okay, I need to duplicate this. So to start with, I'm hitting insert on the key on the keyboard to snap the pivot point to the center of the object. Now that I've done that, I'm duplicating special, control D. And Y, Y being the vertical, if we scale that in the negative, that flips it, mirrors it, and then select the two objects and combine them, mesh combine. You'll see that too, I had a visual problem when I duplicated and then flipped it, it went dark. Uh, that's just a bug, a display bug. It's as soon as you combine them, it fixes it. So zooming in here, I've just selected these vertices and combine them. It's very important as you model that you don't have vertices on top of each other. Okay, so I'll create the shape for the lock. So I've got this file we import into the scene. Import that into the image plane. Just scale it down uh, so it fits in the model. I've just turned on ghosting so I can see the transparency through the model. I can see the image plane. Now, once again, I'm going to use the quad draw tool because I, I need to model this low poly shape, but it's important to maintain the keyhole. So we're using this photo as a reference, as a guide. So I'm basically drawing in all of the outside vertices that I think I need to keep this shape and make some minor adjustments to those verts. And then once I'm done, I'm using the target world to clean up anything I don't feel I need. So when there's a, an opportunity there to make that geometry a bit more efficient, it's very important to do so because it's a game asset. We need that to run smoothly. So it needs to be low poly. So again, I'm hitting insert to snap the pivot point to the edge of the model. So I've just duplicated that model and mirrored the other half by scaling in negative one in the X. Combine the two models. Now to merge these, 
selecting two the two faces and hitting merge and then I'm going through and hitting the G key which repeats the last command. So just selecting the next two hitting G, selecting the next two hitting G and that rapidly goes through and merges all of those verts. So now I'm extruding out those faces to give this some depth. So this keyhole is a little bit higher poly than the base. Just saving this as 0 2, so I've got an increment. It gives me a file history I can always go back to if I need it. So selecting the multi cut tool, holding shift outside of the model, and then clicking and dragging straight down through the model lets me cut the model. And what I've done there is snap those to the grid. So selecting all those verts and snapping, snapping them to the grid just to ensure they're aligned perfectly with the grid. And now zooming in, I want to just make a couple of adjustments to these verts on the base section to make sure that I can create the shape for a keyhole because we want to create a hole there. So I'm using the multi-cut tool to draw in the matching shape of that keyhole, I'm just hitting enter. And now that creates an end gone, so I just need to click on the outside verts and connect these to make sure they're all either quads or triangles. So now I can just select those inside faces inside the keyhole and delete them on the, uh, the base section of the mesh. Now I've just deleted the inside because I realize um, the keyhole shape that I modeled didn't reflect on the other side. So the easiest way to fix that is simply delete it so I only have the front faces and then extrude those out again. Now what I'm doing is selecting the outside edges. So when you double click on an edge, that selects the edge loop as best it can. And now I'm just going through and holding down shift and clicking on the other edges manually just to make sure that I've got all of the outside edges selected and then moving those in a little bit. I've actually just undone control Z and just making sure that I have uh, the bits I want selected. Okay, so that seems to work fairly well. Now I'm deleting the inside faces. So I've got these faces selected on the inside, inside of the model. If I duplicated this over with those faces still there, and they would exist inside the model. So I need to delete those. So when I duplicate it, I don't end up with extra geometry inside the model, which is very bad practice. So essentially this needs to be a hollow object. We're not having faces that aren't doing anything inside any object that we create. So I've duplicated that over, scale negative one in the X, merge the components, And I'm saving that as handle 03. So we can see there the all the verts haven't merged. So I'm just uh, zooming out and selecting those vertices. Selecting the vertices and merging the components. And we can see that's actually merged too much. If we look at the key handle, the keyhole there, half of that's collapsed. So I need to turn down the threshold on my merge components option. And keeping an eye on the poly count in the viewport that shows me that it has merged all of those verts correctly. Bringing the keyhole section forwards, extruding it out a little. Now I'm deleting any faces that aren't, won't be seen in game. We don't need to worry about these. So just delete those. Um, that's going to be up, it's going to be up against the door at some point. Uh, the player will never see behind the object. So anything that the player won't see shouldn't be there. There's no need to make the game engine trying to render extra content that when it's not going to be seen. You don't want to load anything into memory that won't be needed.
Okay, so I've just selected all of those edges and gone into normals, soften edge. And so that gets rid of our faceted faces that makes those faces smooth, which makes the whole mod model look higher quality. Now there's a little bit of an issue here, so I'm just running the smooth edges. You can see there if I hit set to face, uh, they all become faceted again. And soften edge cleans that up. But there's still some funny issues there, so I'm just sort of experimenting. Soften edges. There's a little bit of pinching going on, um, but for fortunately the uh, keyhole shape actually covers that. Just making some minor adjustments to the overall shape of the model and using target weld there to clean it up a little. Okay, so now we're ready to start unwrapping this. And the first thing we need to do is create a checker texture. So to cr create a Lambert, create a file. I'm connecting the file to a color. Double clicking on the file and in the folder there, navigating to my checker texture. Middle click dragging that shader, that material onto the model and turning on my textures, view check textures in the viewport which is just that sphere with the checker picture on it. So I can see my checkers and we can see it's not unwrapped at all. It's very messy. What we need to see on this model is very clean, minimal stretching checkers. So I'm just going to save, make a duplicate file again before I move on and deleting history, cleaning up the scene and we're ready to unwrap. Okay, so go edit UV. UV texture editor so we can see the model and the first thing we want to do is create UVs based on camera and you can see the relationship between the 3D model in the viewport there and the actual the 2D UVs that it's created and so now we go through and separate the different sections start with I've selected the front keyhole section and just click on a single UV hold down control right click and select two shell and that selects the entire UV shell which in this case is just the section for this front keyhole and then hit the W for your move tool and just drag that, that section over. So now I'm selecting where I want my UV texture seams so you go into edge mode and select the edges that you want to remove. What I'm seeing in here is these, these strange edges. Uh, because we're looking, what we're looking at here are two objects. So the front section of the, the keyhole and then the base behind it. And they both have the same edge loop. So we see some odd ge geometry in there. Just need to be aware of that. It makes it a little tricky. Now if you go into Polygons Display and just make this menu float, you can click on Texture Border Edges. So this makes your texture seams visible and you can change the edge width in there. So to start with, I'm trying a cylindrical unwrap for the inside of this. I'm just rotating the shape of that cylindrical unwrap. which gives me a nice uh, long line in here in the UV editor. And now if I scale that up a little and click on unfold, it just cleans up some of the stretching. And we'll scale that down. So that, that's the inside section of the keyhole uh, completed, at least for this front component. There's also an inside section of the keyhole for the base component that I'll come back to. Now this entire front section I've just scaled up and I'm trying to unfold. You can see here I've got a couple of texture seams at the very top and the very bottom which helps it unfold smoothly. For the most part that unfolds quite cleanly. We get a little bit of distortion around the sides but it's 
it's not a, a lot of stretching. It's just uh, they're not aligned vertically and horizontally. So it's a good unwrap. It seems to work pretty well. So now I'm just selecting the inside faces of the the keyhole for the back, the base of the model, and I'm doing a cylindrical unwrap again. So if I click that little plus in the lower corner, it gives me a rotation tool, which I can rotate, or I can just type in uh, 90 into the rotate X in the channel box. And now if I click the little handles, the yellow handles or red handles on the side, I can scale those out. out. Back in my texture editor, scale up the shape and then unfold. Then scale it down. As you finish a shell, just scale it down and move it over to the side. So we end up with a collection of shells on the side, on the outskirts of our uh, zero 01 texturing space, which is, a, which is our main square that we'll end up packing. Once you've got all of these shells uh, surrounded, we then pack into the zero 01 space. You need to eyeball the resolution size. So what I'm doing now is scaling them uh, so that all of the square checkers that we're seeing in the viewport there are roughly the same size as each other. So I'm just selecting what's remaining, what still needs to be unwrapped. I'm going to select the top and the bottom edges here and cut those, which will help with the unfold. So now if I just select the whole model and unfold it, I'm scaling up because the unfold tool in Maya just works much nicer if it's the UV shell is scaled up to be large. So unfold seems to work pretty well on that model. Very clean, you know, simple model to unwrap. So scaling down. So I've scaled them to eyeball in the viewport so that all the checker textures the checkers in the viewport are about the same size as each other. And now I'm scaling up to make the largest piece, which is the, the large back section, so that it just fits inside this uh, texture space. And then I'm just positioning these remaining components inside uh, the area that I'm using. So they're packed. Now there's still more to this model. I haven't created the actual handle. This is just the base. So that's the starting point. But now we'll go through and create the rest of it. So I'll start by creating a cylinder. Looking at the photo reference, we have a cylinder uh, with the handle coming off the cylinder and the cylinder rotates. That's the actual uh, handle mechanism. I'm just snapping this to make sure it's aligned with the rest of the model. Clicking on uh, the vert snap tool, or you could just hold down V. I'm setting the subdivision axis to 12. And I'm putting in a two subdivision caps. And just selecting those back faces and then holding down control to unselect anything I don't want and deleting, which gets rid of my back faces quite quickly. And moving that whole model in to where I want it to be. Now I'm selecting those inside faces and extruding out. I'm just modeling this based on photo reference. So on another monitor that you can't see here, I have a uh, photo of this door handle visible. So I'm not trying to be super accurate to the reference. I'm just uh, approximating, which is why I don't have the photo reference loaded in the image uh, viewport. So I've just duplicated that cylinder and Moved it forwards to create this extra section. Which gives me something that's perfectly aligned with the original cylinder. And the same number of edges. So this door handle will connect to another cylinder at the outside. I'll also set that to be 12 faces. Keeping in mind once again this is our low poly in-game asset. So we don't want this to be too detailed. And we're trying to be relatively efficient with this asset. It's not a super high-end workflow. We're looking at something relatively low poly. So, you know, if it was, uh, say, PlayStation 4, Xbox One era, you might be looking at um, many thousands of polygons in-game. But uh, this asset's going to be a few hundred at the most. 
perhaps it might exist in a larger scene with a lot more detail. You need to be appropriate with your resolution of textures and your poly count, appropriate to what you need for the scene and what, what the game requires. Generally though, the, the main rule there is to try and be as efficient as possible. If you can get away with doing something with less detail and it still looks good, then that's the way you should go. You're trying to be very efficient. So I've just extruded out. I'm going to do, do something different to create a nice flowing sort of connection between these two cylinders. So I've used the EP curve tool. And just by clicking two key positions, clicking and dragging, that creates a nice curve. And I continue that curve through from those two uh, extrusion points on each cylinder. Now I can go right click once I finish that, go into curve point. I can just um, move those points to make the shape a little cleaner just until I get a nice S bend that I'm happy with and what I'm going to do is use this curve as a guide for extrusions I've just center the pivot so the pivot point is right over the curve and I'm just aligning that with the rest of the model now selecting those two faces and then shift selecting the curve and go into Edit Mesh, Extrude Face, and I'm telling it how many divisions I want. And note that in the curve settings, I have selected checked. And so in the channel box there, we can see a few options. We can come back and adjust if we need. So I've just deleted the end faces there. Now I'm double, double clicking the outside edge loops to select all of those outside edge loops. So now that I have those selected, I'm scaling. Just click the tool settings and set it to local mode. You can see I haven't got all of the faces selected, so I'll just go back and make sure they're selected. Scale, and that gives me a nice clean shape. It's much better than it was. Now I'm just selecting those faces from the extrusion of the first cylinder and deleting those. And I just need to find a way to connect these. So to start with, I'm separating them, centering the pivot, and because I want to scale this out, uh, to try to get it to align much nicer with the rest of the handle. So I've combined those again, centered the pivot. I'm just deleting the history, always a good thing to do regularly. I've clicked the isolate selection button. I'm using target weld, I've gone into vertice mode and I'm weld welding by clicking and dragging which verts I want. Uh, it's a little bit of a fiddly tilt tool. You need to make sure you've got the exact vertice that you want selected. So you need, to, you need to be careful with the target weld tool in the modeling toolkit. As long as you're careful, it's, uh, it can be useful. I'm just going through and welding. It's not selecting what you want. You need to change your viewport, zoom in, orbit if necessary. Just make sure you're getting the verts that you want selected with your target weld. I've just decided to clean this up a little by welding those up. That seems to work nicely. And perhaps these ones can just connect. Actually, I'll use the multi-cut tool and just create a little V there to make sure it all flows nicely.
just extruding that back section, making sure it comes through the door handle component nicely. Okay, it's just selecting all these verts at the end on this cylinder at the end, and I'm just rotating uh, basically because the reference photo has this component sort of bending underneath the handle a little bit. Now I'm double clicking to select this edge loop, and again I'm rotating that edge loop. I'm also going to move it and maybe rotate this one a little just trying to create a little bit of a cleaner um, flow but getting this section rotating bending underneath the end of the door handle uh, to create more of the shape i'm after that seems to work pretty well Maybe I'll just make this vert here a little wider. I'll just manually adjust these verts. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Yeah, we've got all these faces at the back that the player will never see. So let's just select all of the back faces and then hold down control, select the front faces to to unselect the front so that we only have the back section and delete those. So just deleting the back faces, any faces again that the player won't see, delete. So I'm just making some final tweaks. Trying to get a more clean silhouette of the model so the overall shape flows a bit nicer. And I think that's about done. Now we've got a little bit of faceting there. So I need to just select those edges and go normal, soften edge. Now when we look at it, they are much nicer. We're not seeing the hard edges there. Got the same problem at this end. So we'll select those, all of those edges. Normals, soften edge, much better. And need to do the same with the sort of bolt section. There's a few bits and pieces that need to have their edges softened. I'm just uh, going to repeat last command. So G, the last command I did was soften edge. Okay, so let's just save the file. And we're ready to unwrap that last section. So once again, I've applied the checker texture. Now I've just gone create UVs based on camera and move them off to the side. Starting with that back sort of bolt section, since it's a cylinder, a cylindrical unwrap is perfect. So just rotating that in the X90 and scaling them so they're nice and square checkers. You can see in the viewport in the texture editor what that's done for us. So I'm just doing an unfold. I'm just cutting those edges that aren't, I don't want connected, moving them over to the other side and clicking on the move and sew tool to sew them back. So it's all nicely aligned and running another unfold and that section is unwrapped, so I'll scale that down and just rotate it, make sure everything's rotated, is nice and level. Click the Align Selected UVs. It just snaps them all uh, with the highest U value or V value, depending on which button you click. 
the front section there, it's just a plane because it's just one direction, there's no nothing else. So I've selected those faces, create UVs, planar mapping, and select your options and just make sure you project from the correct axis based on whether it's X, Y, Z, red, green, blue. So in that case, it's blue, which is Z. So click the Z axis and hit project. And that gives us a perfect unwrap, which is already unfolded for that, that section. So I just need to scale it down, making sure the checkers match about the same size as the other checkers. And that just leaves the handle itself. So I might cut through the center here and also at the end where this cylinder is. So just selecting those edges and clicking the scissors, the cut tool. Now selected, I've done a planar mapping just for the front face of that cylinder. And I'm just unfolding. So select the whole shell and unfold. Now by inserting that cut down the bottom, that unfolds much more cleanly. I've decided to just scale this section, this front face of the model in. So that helps. Just with this, the form, the silhouette of the whole model looks a bit cleaner if it's not a perfect cylinder. Instead of a single cut along the outside edge of that cylinder, I've put two in to help the whole lot unfold a little nicer. So it's an, an extra seam, but it's, it means less stretching. Scale that in, make sure the checkers are about the same size as the rest of it. And now for this section, since I've already inserted a cut here, I just need to select a UV. I've done control, right click to shell and move that shell over to the side. And now I'm just unfolding. And like with the last cylinder that we did, this needs a, uh, a couple of cuts to help it unfold cleanly. So selecting those edges and cutting. So it seems to work best if I insert an edge loop, insert a cut along the base there. So we unfold the base and the top separately. So this whole handle section will be unwrapped into three separate sections. So that gives us a nice clean unfold, unwrap. And now we're just packing. And so now that I've got everything in the zero one space here, we can see there's a fair bit of empty space. So we want to take advantage of that. Now, because the, this shell on the left, which is the main base uh, shape is as large as it can be and fit in the zero one space as one complete piece. We can't scale the whole lot up, but we can scale the other components. So I'm just trying to select sections which are worth scaling up. They don't need to be identical resolution, they need to be similar resolution. Generally with lower poly objects like this, 
it's actually more difficult to get a nice tight UV pack. Uh, when you're talking about higher poly assets and there's a lot of different shells, it's usually a lot easier. You have more to work with. Um, it takes more time, but it's easier to get a very tight pack. Uh, whereas here, you, you inevitably end up scaling some shells much larger than others. So I've ended up making the main locking section uh, higher resolution than the rest of it because I'm going to sculpt in a little bit of detail on that. But basically, this asset is, is largely finished. It's unwrapped. Doing some final checks. I feel like this section could be unfolded a little cleaner. And what I'm going to do here is just try insert, inserting a couple of cuts and then doing another unfold because it just seems to be stretching a little. But of course what happens is that those cuts start to overlap. So I've just selected it and done another planar projection. And what I've actually done is separate the front section And so this section will unfold because it's such a clean, simple section that unfolds nicely, uh, nice and square. And it doesn't really need to be very high resolution because we're just not going to see much of that at all. So I'm scaling that down fairly small and positioning that in and just uh, making some minor adjustments to fit in the remaining shells. So scaling those up to use up as much as, of that empty space as I can. And uh, that look, is looking pretty good. So that's a low poly model ready to go. We'll just uh, clean up the scene and save it all. And so that's the low poly model finished and unwrapped. In the next video, we'll go through uh, turning this into a high poly model so that it can be subdivided which we'll bring into Mudbox and we'll sculpt in a bit of extra detail and then we will use the Quixel suite with Endo and Dedo to just add further normal map uh, detail and texturing information which will give us our finished asset. Thanks for watching.